Welcome to the Alchemy of Ascension Season 2, where we are exploring our galactic origins and becoming multidimensional. Today, I have a returning guest, Elizabeth Wood. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. I'm really excited about our topic. I am too, and I'm always delighted to have a conversation with you, and we never know where it's going to go, but it's always fascinating. <laughs> so um, just so that I can share a little bit about your background and what you're all about, I'll, I'll share from um, what I have written here. Um, considered a world-class seer, Elizabeth Wood works on the cutting edge of remote viewing, quantum healing, and quantum anthropology. With her lifelong ability to see into all dimensions and work with other dimensions of energy, her theoretical and psychic work has helped people all over the world called all over the world, sorry, called Living Library, Oracle, and Way Shower, Elizabeth has spent her whole life studying anthropological history, quantum physics, ancient and modern medicine, and futurism. She has two science degrees, including a master's in applied anthropology. Her philosophies and practices bridge science and spirituality to support real change in the world. And you are a very accomplished individual and so diverse. Um, it's, you know, it's just fun. Any conversation we have is fun. But um, I especially love that you are a galactic anthropologist. And that's such a unique title. Um, let's start there. Tell us about being a galactic anthropologist and what that means. Yeah, it's been a very fun ride an evolution of a science that I love very much. So anthropology, most people, they'll think of archeology. span <laughs> And anthropology is much more than that. Anthropology is the study of humanity, but it's always in position of a greater context. So we might study our current culture right now and how it's changing, as I've always loved to look at change. Or you could study the ancient past and the context of culture and humanity in the past. In this case, there's these two other forms of anthropology that have been evolving out of that science for some time now, and I'm not the only one. So although it sounds really fancy, uh, I haven't made these up. <laughs> there's lots of other people doing the same work. So I encourage people to go look at some of that work. Quantum anthropology would say, well, what does quantum physics have to do with being human? How does quantum, the quantum world affect culture change? And how do humans affect quantum physics? And then galactic anthropology then is the same idea. Where are humans in this galactic history that's gone on far beyond just the planet's history? What is the human in this whole position, this context of the galaxy? Now, normally we could say, well, in, in modern sort of mainstream science, no one's so sure that we're really not all alone, et cetera. But this assumption right now that I'd like to say is a fact, is that we're not, and we haven't been. And the influence that's occurred at a galactic level has influenced culture change perhaps more than almost any other thing that we've encountered as humans. So as a galactic anthropologist, I'm always looking for those clues, those, the evidence that we're not alone, not just from my own experience, which is why I got curious about the fact in the first place. I've had an incredible lexicon of, of interactions with beings that are definitely not human. And I think that most cultures have, and it's well established in the culture. And that's what anthropologists look for. They're looking for themes. And we have so many that basically give us a chance to look at ourselves not just as a lonely planet 
with one singular awake species and that's it. All of that is true, truly untrue. <laughs> it's, it's simply that we are part of something greater. And I think that with that mindset, it's a big shift in consciousness when you decide to say, we're not alone. And humans have been influenced by many different kinds of beings, some who've had an agenda on their mind and some who've had a human agenda on their mind and everything in between. So we then can ask why? Why are all these beings from more than one dimension and also from more than one planet, why are they interested in us? How special is the earth really? Well, when there's thousands of different kinds of beings interested in us, it tells us something. It tells us that we do have something very special and that we are very unique in this galaxy. And there's reasons why that I've discovered over the years, having interactions with other beings, but also, and most especially, having the human agenda on my mind looking at the experiences of many thousands of people over the past decade and in session in support or in gathering of information. So I love that galactic anthropology exists because we can take the scientific method up to that level and not be ashamed that we believe that we are not alone and that that belief is backed up by good factual evidence. And so that's really quite special. I think it's a big era. It's a big shift in mindset for us to imagine ourselves part of this greater playing field. Yeah, it, it truly is. And I love that the conversation is, it feels to me like it's really opening up to not so much if it's true, but that it is true. Let's just accept it and go with that and explore that. Um, I know for myself, they, people always say seeing is believing, and I was seeing um, galactic beings or interdimensional beings from my early childhood, and that makes it a lot easier to believe in <laughs> and a lot harder to deny when you're, uh, when you're being visited uh, at you know, all ages by various species and different looking beings. So for me, um, I love that this is a conversation that I get to have openly now, because for my entire childhood, it was a conversation that I wasn't going to mention or talk about. And I tried to like not talk about it. So it's really yeah. fun. And I find, you know, that's part of why in this, um, this show, I decided to go deeply into our galactic origins. Let's explore that. And I've had some people say, well, you know, so many people already want to get out of their bodies and that gives them more of an opportunity to leave their body and not be in the body. But I think you and I would both take it the opposite direction and say, knowing more about who we are and who we, where we came from and who we came from actually gives us more information to know who we are and ha hold more of that presence, just like finding out your lineage, your your family tree, you know, ages and ages back, well, that doesn't take you out of the body. That just gives you more information about who you really are and what made you that way. Would you agree? Oh, yes. And I think that the human body experience is a 12-dimensional experience. It is these particular types of bodies with this specific DNA. And how we're using it that gives us access to being able to have interactions with beings, even though they might not be 3D physically in front of you. Many of them are, but I would add that, that you're not leaving any dimensions behind when you go into full embodiment, that you're only getting access to more, that it's a lot of rooms with no walls between them and the idea is always going to be access how much more access to all these dimensions can i create so i think that while we are looking outside the self we're looking at history we're looking at how exactly the human evolved to this position 
and why they've been through so much subjugation for so long and now finally are realizing at a global level at this moment in time especially that we are one and that our consciousness is incredibly powerful and that that's why thousands of different beings for eons and eons have been interested in us and so i would say that the galactic anthropological viewpoint is an empowering viewpoint it's empowering you to enjoy and know that being human is very special and important and that we have a gift we have gifts that we can give that it's not just us learning from everybody else it's the other way around and that they're learning from us just as much and that's that's really important because we often will put many of these beings on pedestals. <laughs> we put these beings on pedestals because they seem to know more than we do. And it's simply not true that that's necessary. It is a playing field of equanimity that we're going to learn how to get back to. And part of it is really loving and enjoying and getting to know these bodies. It's intimately part of the whole process of seeing where we're at in this galaxy. Mm. Yeah, I love that. That actually reminds me of my own path in, um, you know, I used to, when I would find a guide or, you know, be in training, we'll say with a guide, um, really, I mean, and I do hold reverence for the guides that come, um, but it would be that almost like guru student relationship in my mind, you know, and that's really transformed for me now as I've evolved. And I feel like that's the human evolution of understanding, oh, this is an aspect of me, um, whether I look at it as a guide, an interdimensional being, um, whatever, you know, a, a goddess, a god, it doesn't really matter. If it's coming to me, it's part of me. And I can realize, okay, this is a part of myself telling me something that I want to remember or, or know or remind myself of. Therefore, you know, of course I will have reverence, but I won't put them on a, the pedestal anymore. I'll see myself as an equal. And that has really made a huge shift in my own ability to sort of quantum leap, I guess, when I get um, brother, like when, when the Anubis beings came to me and took me into a period of training, I said, I asked them, why don't I feel you in my heart? And they said, because you don't see us as your brothers. And I'm like, when I got that, I was, my heart opened up to them. I'm like, oh, because I'm one of you, because you're my brothers, because we're equals. And, and then I could get so much more. And I think that's part of the evolvement that you're talking about. Oh, that's so beautiful. I just love that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, the way I often tell people, I, I give them a chance to examine this for themselves because um, while some beings will revel in the enjoyment of being on a pedestal, many of them won't. And it's their constant effort to try to lift humans out of their worthlessness. And I, and I point people into the direction of discernment that you need to discern. And discernment is different than making a judgment call. A judgment call runs through your ego. But discernment is a full body, even beyond the self. It, discernment is a full body experience. And the question, you gotta ask good questions along the way. And you, you ought to say to yourself, you know, am I holding myself truly separate from this being, this being that's part of source? We're all part of source here, the source field. And am I holding them myself separate? And do they have an agenda? What is their agenda? If I ask them about it, will they tell me? Do I have an agenda with them? These are really important questions. And what we want is we'd like to have these agendas support each other. So some agendas are gonna be very specific and happen to revolve around the context of humanity. For example, angels and demons, they're having this all out war <laughs> and they're in a whole other dimension, but it has to do with humans. Humans are caught up in the middle of it. 
And although the agenda that the angels have is really to get home, they want to end this war. They'd like to go home. That's their agenda. And therefore, they don't go in and try to influence humanity very often. And if they do, it's because they have to, they must, they have no choice because perhaps the demonic's way too involved or whatever. So a good example is that I had seven angels following me around for my entire life until I merged with all of that dimension. But they were incredible friends and teachers. However, it wasn't until I was about 30 years old that I realized that not one of these seven angels had ever asked me a question that I'd been the one asking the questions. And I said, why? How come you didn't ever ask me any questions? And they said, that's not up to us to influence you with what we wanna know. And it was very fascinating to see that their agenda, they were trying to stay out of the human story the best they could, influence it the way they needed to in order to try to get home. <laughs> so you're always thinking about what is the agenda on the plate here? Is it a human agenda? Is it a different one? Can these two work together? And to discern it with the whole body because the mind isn't always the perfect one to discern this stuff. The heart and the gut can help you out with all of that. So that's something, that's a mindset shift that can help people to realize, hey, we have this position in the galaxy and it is not as servants and subservient, uh, ignorant, you know, primates running around on this planet. <laughs> That's not what it is at all. It's something much, much bigger. And deep in our heart, we can feel it. We desire it. We look for it. And in modern uh, teaching, we get shoved off to the side is basically evolved primates and that's that and we're all alone and there's no point, but n that's all been a distraction from what's deep inside of us, the desire to be in knowing and in wisdom far beyond this planet, far beyond this dimension that we're used to in the 3D. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting and it makes me, it, <laughs> You know, that I'm really wondering, where do the archangels want to go? Or where are the angels trying, like, where is home for them? And what is in, the, in their agenda? Like, what do they have to do to be liberated? Yeah, that's a good question. When I've discussed these things with them, they have a prime directive. So their prime directive, just kind of like, almost exactly like Star, Star Trek. The prime directive is, don't do any influencing um, and don't, don't ask questions, don't give information unless you're asked. And so humans have to use their divine will to open themselves up to that information. Home is this whole other dimension of the seventh dimension. They, they call it, well, it's the realms of the angelic. And the existence of humanity and the beginning of our experiment here on earth an experiment in consciousness, tossed them into a big, huge fight with a whole other section of their brethren. And it's all a very sad story. Like many of the stories that we've been told are actually run through whole lenses of, of judgment and expectations and information. For example, like the Anunnaki story is actually really, really sad and not at all what we're used to, not at all what Stitchin taught us. And the, the writings of that was all run through the ancient people's uh, deciphering of what those events really were. But the same is with the, the angelic, and that the beginning of this experiment was so big and so intense, and it took so much effort that there the, we've kind of tossed a big wrench <laughs> in the ongoing galactic wars that have been going on in this galaxy for many many billions of years 
we tossed a wrench in because we're so unique and yet we're a conglomeration of our knowledge about basic things in these bodies like joy or pain or sadness these are all gifts these are all gifts of frequency that our friends and family who were involved in this creation all gifted us knowledge about and the angelic they wanted to see us as these wonderful powerful beings giving a given a chance to really evolve consciousness and that's always the point learning is the point for anything for subjugation for joyful happenings all of the above it's always for learning it's always for evolving consciousness for getting to know and accessing all these dimensions all at once and using the capabilities of this magnificent dna that took eons to create and the angelic saw us as what we are truly incredibly powerful beings whose mere thought can create ripples across this galaxy and this universe just our thoughts can do that let alone our words or our actions and we're fascinating to them because they have access to one dimension and they live for millions of years and so that by them examining this incredible power well it turned out that humans are emanating power constantly and some of this power is really beautiful power of light and some of it's really dense like sadness or despair or anger well there was a group of the angelic who said well you know what we can absorb this stuff and they're just like these giant powerhouses they're just releasing all this amazing energy and we just can gobble it up why would we having been millions of years old why would we want to sit here and learn about them or learn from them that's crazy we should be consuming all of this free resources that they're giving and voila then now you have a war because one group wanted to utilize us and subjugate us for consumption of energy and the other wanted to learn and that literally defines half a million years of interactions between the angelic and the demonic <laughs> and it also gives you a clue that our dna is the reason why our dna is what's so special our dna is unique in this galaxy and perhaps in the universe and our DNA gives us access, but it also has another, a, another reason why it exists for memory. And so over many eons, human beings can actually have access to their ancestors' memories through DNA. But here's a really fascinating thing that has occurred. When the experiment in consciousness started on earth no one wanted to remember the galactic how horrifying they were no one wanted to remember it so the lyrans who are very little talked about and they're not the lyrians they're not the cat people it's a very different group and they're the oldest we might call them the oldest siblings the oldest siblings who created the very first form out of dna it took them over a thousand years to do and they were from the fifth dimension but they wanted to experience all dimensions at once and they wanted to remember what their ancestors would experience well they had set aside dna that we might call the original dna and they came in and said what do we want to remember so they picked and chose different frequencies such as sadness or capabilities such as healing or singing or speech and they created 94 ancient templates of wisdom which they encoded into the embodiment of human dna that's the memories we received from our galactic ancestors and that's it that's why being a human we can't remember the galactic wars we have soul memories of some of that stuff which is a different set of memory 
but we don't remember genetically what happened in the galactic wars. Genetically, what we remember is the past half a million years of all the tough stuff and how hard it has been to be human. So this DNA having so much access and then creating an immense amount of power, again, with a simple thought, with a simple focused thought, it creates massive change that our very original, very first human ancestors could track. And we're learning to track it again. We're learning to track it through the imagination, which is what the third eye is. We're learning to track it with our hearts and how feel into the field beyond ourselves. And we're learning to track it with these embodiments and the intimate relationship it has with the earth. So we're remembering how to do what we're capable of. And that's what we would call empowerment. And many beings are here to empower us. And some of them aren't. Some of them have these horrible, sad stories and all they want to do is reproduce like gray aliens. Gray aliens ab have abducted half of 50 million people, 50 million, 50 million people in the United States over the past 60 years. That's a lot of people. Why would they be doing that? They didn't get consent. Consent is one of those cool gifts humans are going to give to the galactic table. But they did it because they don't have a planet and being lost in space for so long, they lost the ability to reproduce and they're desperate. They just want to be able to find a way to make their DNA work with our DNA so they can live. And they have. And there's all these people, and I work with some of them, actual, real 3D people with names and families who are hybrids. And they have a whole new set of problems because <laughs> they have this two different DNA that really don't work well together trying to have a life as a normal human. It's very interesting. And it can be really painful to look at because we're looking at us having had so many, so many problems with interference for so long. And then us finally trying to remember and remembering during a time of even more crazy wars and difficulty between human beings themselves. So it's rough. This is tough stuff. But the power, the power is light. Light is power. The embodiment can be full of light. And this light is magnificent and full of information and an intelligence. It's intelligence that's beyond you. It's intelligence that's from the source of all things. And it gives us the chance to experience the three gifts that humanity will bring to the table. Consent, unconditional love, and universal compassion. Because we will welcome the hybrids. We will welcome all of these beings to be our friends. Even the ones who've abducted us, even the ones who subjugated us, even the ones who have had these whole other agendas. In the end, it's gonna be us who will show the whole galaxy, what love and compassion and consent really look like. And that will be the greatest thing that humans will be able to give to our brethren who really do want to learn from us in the end. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. That's a lot. Uh, there are a lot of different, like, uh, points that I would love to follow from that. And, um, and one of them that it just, it, this is interesting because it just dropped in this morning um, for me. And so it has to be relevant, right? <laughs> like one of those seemingly out of the blue drop in, <laughs> yeah. you know, downloads. And I was like, ah, you know, okay. So I had this, you know, we've heard about these warlike um, galactic timelines and, and there's so much war in our history, you know, the human history and the galactic history and, and the earth. And there's just such a strong warlike timeline that, that we've experienced. And it, you know, it was, I was getting ready. It's so funny when these things happen, just like getting ready for my day in front of the bathroom mirror. And I had this whole memory of a timeline where it wasn't warlike, 
where it was peaceful and and the the guidance i was receiving was remember your peaceful timeline remember this and i suppose other dimension the, the timelines are all layered like you said a house with many rooms right like remember the genetic origins where we come from peace where we come from you know what you're saying love and compassion and unity and that exists too you know and so I'm like oh yeah and 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 part of the download of that was like start remembering and telling that story so that your species can extract itself from believing it's it's of war oh i love that that's amazing i agree and there was there was a really long long piece during the we might call it the age of the Lyrans, and the and there always has been eight eons of peace and so for example um syrians and pleiadians we know them quite well arcturians as well these are three species are that are talked about quite often and and have had an incredible influence on humanity um the pleiadians were talking to, to nikola tesla for example and um and the handoff of a lot of different technology has occurred through all of these connections to these peaceful beings they learned how to be peaceful because they went through their tough stuff they went through this kind of difficulty where they were learning about power over the power over concept is what has created war in the first place any kind of energetic around power over is what will, will end up tossing up any society, any planet, any species. When they finally learn that power is light and light is power and that you cannot and, and don't have power over anything, and then you end up settling back into what we might call the divine will, allowing yourself to be part of a will that is larger than you, the source field, then they have found eons of peace. So the Pleiadians, they did have a point in time where they committed incredible genocides. The Syrians had awful wars and they nearly destroyed themselves with their own weapons. The Arcturians also had incredible oppression on their own planet. They all know this stuff. They already went through it. And almost every species in this particular galaxy has. Not every galaxy has gone through the same particular issues. Andromedan beings, for example, don't have any history of power over. So coming here to this galaxy is quite confusing for most of them. But the, the point being that any kind of power over that pops up is always going to create that big toss up. It's going to create a struggle until everyone starts to realize what real power is. That real power is oneness. That real power is the ability to be as formless as possible, allowing as much light to move through you. And that the laws of creation and destruction and preservation and integration, these laws that run the whole universe, that those laws are not there to create pain. That they are constantly occurring in order to create momentum, momentous and momentum change throughout all dimensions and throughout the whole source field and that that momentum and that love and acceptance and celebration of those laws within you can continue to actually pull forward all species towards a, an era of peace and so i foresee that one of the gifts that human beings will bring to the table that we're doing now is teaching about consent because consent will help to end the power over struggle between us and many species, and especially between ourselves. And then that love and compassion, which is not just any kind of love or any kind of compassion. Universal compassion says, and, and unconditional love says, because you exist, I have love and compassion for you, that there is no other requirement except existence. 
And when you say that to a being who's in front of you who wants to do you harm, it can be incredibly amazing how the playing field suddenly balances out. And I'm saying this with conviction because I have been abducted three times. It's been very difficult, brutal, dark experiences. I've had horrifying experiences with dark beings, beings who wanted to hurt me or even kill me. Nonetheless, the way that I've always been able to make sure that didn't turn into trauma or turn into an end of my life, which it certainly felt like it many times, was those three things. This being doesn't understand consent. Okay, this being doesn't know what love and compassion is. So I'm going to show them with my consciousness because my consciousness is that powerful. And I've seen miracles happen because of that. So I say it with conviction from experience that it's possible to be able to bring this to the table. And that kind of nicely leads into that hope that we are going to be able to feel empowered, but also be able to communicate not only between ourselves much better with those three concepts in mind, but also between us and many species, including ones who aren't even from this galaxy, who are here, they're definitely here, and they're always trying to learn and they're doing their best to bring peace. I think the Andromedans actually have a big, huge role to play when it comes to peace because they're so different than us. So totally, totally different than us. And it's miraculous that any of this is even occurring and that we can talk about it as openly as we are now. Yeah, that is fascinating. And it, it makes me think about, you know, for, for humans and our being in our authentic power, um, that really is the concept. And for many, for many people, they haven't had this experience, but they're, I feel like we're getting there. Like as a species, we're going this direction of like human self empowerment and true authentic power is knowing that we're all connected and therefore there is no desire to have power over or or to be suppressed but to that when i uplift with love compassion and um and that knowingness that i'm connected that we're all uplifted and and that's authentic power in my i'm empowered by contributing rather than consuming <laughs> <laughs> yes, beautiful. I love that. And that's what it is. It is authentic power. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so wonderful. Yeah. And so I would love to get into a, a, a little discussion about, we had talked about the three languages of the universe, and I found that fascinating. And I think the viewers would love to hear you speak about that. Awesome. So being an anthropologist, I'm, I'm constantly fascinated with communication of all types. So every being has their own unique ways of communicating. But there's three universal languages. And I always thought that there were two until I met an Andromedan and then they taught me otherwise. And there might be more, but these are the three I know about. And so the first I learned, of course, through the angelic, because they are beings of light. It takes a lot of effort to move information through those dimensions to the 3D. They, you know, there are several steps in a different direction than us energetically. And so while they can appear to be even physical or uh, at least astral, it can be really a lot of effort for that to occur, but they do so with light. So their language is really of light. And we're constantly going back and forth trying to translate this. So when an angel would answer a question for me, it would always be in the form of visuals or some kind of energy that would turn into form. And so I realized, ah, yes, well, they're using light in order to transmit information. And some people can translate this stuff into what we would call frequency language, which is what we're using right now. So our bodies are styled in a certain way in order to create frequency with the voice. 
well, that's actually an incredible power. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really cool thing that humans can do. Because everything is made of frequency and everything is literally a frequency. So perhaps on like the frequency line here, humans function mostly over here in this 3D frequency line. And that's why none, no dimension is better than another. They're more like a big, huge circle. But, you know, over here is the angelic. And they know that if they push a whole lot of light through, that it'll appear to us as some kind of form or information and that we can translate that into frequency. And all that they were using is frequency too. Light and frequency are related in that all photons are actually wavelengths as well. So they are both at the same time. That's why it can be translated. So a human, for example, saying something like, I love you, actually has an incredible effect on reality because it also is light too and can be turned into light through our words. So that's why singing and speaking and saying positive things and all these things are very real. It's not just a fun psychological game. It's actually an immense amount of power we have with these bodies and we're really only starting to remember how to use them properly. Now there's this third language and I was doing a session for someone and this being popped in, which is a, oftentimes how I'll meet new beings. Cause everybody's got this whole, you know, lineage or, fam or tribe following them around usually. And this being showed up and it was the most unusual looking being I'd ever seen. The best way I can describe it is like somebody took a bunch of bright indigo blue starfish like a hundred of them and mashed them together. And then it wore a big, huge golden disc around the back of it. So it looked really cool, but <laughs> very unusual in that I couldn't even, I couldn't tell where its head was or anything like that. And, and it's, so I, of course, I'm trying to be kind and reverent. And I asked, you know, what can I do for you? What's come up? What would you like to share? Because this isn't about me. It's about this person I'm serving right now. And she said, and I'll just say she, she said, I want to tell you about the third language of the universe. And of course, this piqued up my interest. And so I'm literally kind of translating between this being and this lady so that she can hear this. And I said, what this being is telling me is that there's the language of orbits. Everything is orbiting everything else. There is an orbit between atoms. There is an orbit between molecules, between cells, between people, between planets, between stars, between galaxies. And this is a language. And the reason why it's a language is because it can, when you get to know this language, it can help you to understand the past, present, and future. Well, that's the point of any language. If we're really down to the nitty gritty of what language is, it's to understand and be able to describe the past, present, and future. Well, the Andromedans know this language. And the reason why they're even here, because they wouldn't be otherwise, is because they could tell that there was these possibilities. And again, being an expert on change, no one can see the future. You can't. You can get lots of very clear possible directions and you can narrow it down pretty well, but you can't see the exact future. There's always going to be that one asteroid that came through that you didn't that you didn't expect that will do some big shift in the, in the orbit or whatever. But they said they saw that there was an immense amount of possible futures where our two galaxies would not get along. And the reason why that's important is because we're merging with Andromeda right now. Right now, Andromeda is touching our galaxy. We're going to become one galaxy. 
this has happened before. There's been other mergers that have occurred, and this galaxy hasn't just been hanging out all by itself in space. There's been other galaxies that have become one with us, which actually gives us a clue to why there's such a diverse amount of species here that have no evolutionary similarity to our DNA, such as draconians or Anunnaki. And so the Andromedan galaxy is merging with our galaxy, and they're concerned that because they're so different than us, that we'll get really afraid, especially humans, xenophobia is what it's called, fear of the other, that we'll get really xenophobic and it'll turn into another war. So they wanted to mitigate that. The other possibilities were, if we involve ourselves in this human experiment, which everybody's eyeballs are on right now, then we'll be able to bring some semblance of peace. We're gonna teach what we know and that will help. That's gonna help all of these beings finally get along and, it, and, and also for their sake. So it's, it's not simply because they're totally selfless about it. They actually really do want us to all get along so we don't go on some crazy war binge because they look so different than us. And some of them really do look very, that, that one was easy to imagine. Some of the others really are difficult to imagine. But the beings that are here to share with us, they really do want that peace. And I think it's a really great blessing. But this concept of orbits then can really affect us because then you can say, wow, I have had these orbits with friends and then we just kind of orbited it out and then they're on a different orbit. And now I don't feel so bad about it. It's just that our orbit shifted or wow, the earth, the earth is conscious and she has picked this orbit to be around this sun with these planets as her brothers and sisters. And that consciousness affects us. And so does the consciousness and the orbit of every atom that we're made of. And that there's this immense amount of divine will choice going on at those levels. And it creates literally a moving, momentous universe. <laughs> and that's why it's called a universal language because you can observe it everywhere. You can observe light, frequency, and orbits everywhere. And there'll probably be, again, more languages that'll pop up over the eons, but those are the three that I know about now. And I think it can be very profound to imagine that there's this whole other type of thinking available. It's quite fun. Oh, that is fun. And does, just wondering, is this why so many people are spontaneously starting to speak light language in its various forms? <laughs> well, I think there's a great remembering happening. And here's why. Two reasons. Number one, humanity's starting to really understand how traumatized we are. How half a million years of subjugation has really screwed us up. And that's the number one thing that blocks you. It blocks all of us from being able to remember our soul's memories better and remember our ancestors' memories better in the DNA. And it also blocks us from embodying all dimensions and being able to use some of the incredible talents we have as souls and as humans. So we haven't even remembered any of these talents until like the past few 50 years when trauma became a number one concern and people helping to heal trauma then came up with huge amounts of capabilities and tools and ideas about how to fix this trauma stuff trauma blocks us from everything that we're capable of and the second reason why it's happening right now is because the earth the earth is changing she herself requires humanity to be in harmony with her and she forces us to shift and change by raising her frequency this is a very physical thing you can measure it and the frequency is constantly raising in height and she's picking these this timeline right now to say i'm going to embody the frequency of not just like the fifth dimension no 
no, not even that, not even the seventh or eighth, the ninth dimension. The, the ninth dimension is where she's at right now. Few people are talking about this, but it, it is so formless and so subtle that the fact that all of our constructs, such as financial systems and social systems, are literally crumbling before our eyes right now, should not surprise anyone at all, because it's frequency. It's frequency who's going to say, no, the corruption of constant division, the corruption of constant separation, the corruption of ego, and the corruption of profit over, and the corruption of subjugation of nature has to go. It's got to go. So all that that informs the structures we've been using for so long is, is falling apart right now. And this is an excellent, wonderful time to begin creating, to create new things in the middle of chaos. Perfect time. Perfect time to ground all of what you create and what earth is making available. The ninth dimension is pure love. And it's incredible. It's incredible love. It's mercy beyond anything we've ever experienced. And it is forcing all of our trauma to the surface. And if anybody thought they were going to get away with not having to deal with their trauma, well, that's not what's happening in people's lives. That's not what's happening. All of it's getting forced to the surface. Personal example, I've been in bed for three weeks with an illness that was so extreme. I've never experienced anything quite like it. And what was it? It was trauma. It wasn't a virus and it, it was shingles in particular, but it wasn't the virus that was causing a problem. The virus was trying to show me what I needed to heal. The virus is smart and it wants to help me to be in harmony with the earth because I haven't been. I haven't been because I haven't seen all of my trauma. Even though I'm an expert at helping people heal all of that, I have plenty of worthlessness and deep trauma I must deal with. And here's our chance. Here's our chance to let it come up for us. It sucks. But if you ever wanted to get done with this stuff faster, now's your time. Now's your time. It's not going to take years anymore. It's not going to take years anymore. It's going to take months. And, and if you're willing, then you won't find yourself being totally kicked to the ground and, and then, it, then falling in despair, which is, which is plausible. Certainly felt like that at certain moments. But the thing is, is facing it, knowing that, oh my goodness, this is half a million years of trauma. It's not just mine. Okay, no wonder I picked this time to be a badass human and do this now. Because as I do it, as you do it, we're affecting the consciousness of all of humanity. The more we're willing to shift this trauma using the earth at, the, at this time, and, and, and her blessing and the blessing of divine will, of course, and grace, the more we're willing now to do that and build a brand new system of reality, a whole other one that functions with the harmony of the earth, what we might call the original template of consciousness for humanity. We're not just going to use the old original one. We're creating a brand new one that's going to work even better because we've learned about subjugation. We've learned from our trauma. And that's the most important piece. So that's why we're remembering all this stuff. And I'm constantly finding new things that I'm capable of and realizing just how powerful it really is. That's why there's this spontaneous remembering and these spontaneous talents arising and people realizing just how psychic they are and just how much they can feel the collective and the planet, and just how much their body is intimately tied to that, and all of what it has to offer, is, it's wonderful. This, this time right now, although it's incredibly hard, it's one of the most precious moments in human consciousness. We've reached a peak, and now is our chance to fly. It truly is now. There's no other better time for it. That's why we got to stay as present as we can. It's good for us to know about our history. It's good for us to look at that 
and, and understand it as to how it brought us to this moment because the future hasn't unfolded yet. There are billions and billions of timelines and they're all perfect. Even if we fail miserably, we'll still have learned so much and brought much to the table. So us worrying about some perfect timeline is just a waste of energy. It's right this moment where all the power is. And that's what I foresee and, and what I know to be true at the moment and why we're all getting more talented and also finding a lot of crazy stuff deep within us that needs to be healed. Mm, indeed. Yes. Thank you for all of that. That was powerful. And I can't believe how time flies, <laughs> but it does, doesn't it? Um, I want to make sure we discuss um, and tell everybody about your awesome free gift. So would you go ahead and share about that? Yes, I'd love to. So real quickly, I wanted to give everybody a diverse set of gifts because everybody's a little different. So those of you who are Pleiadian might like my music and those of you who are Syrian will really like my ebook and <laughs> it'll be just good for everybody. So I have a, uh, some music. It's, it's an 11 minute meditation that I called Horizons and, um, and I wrote it and my husband helped me produce it. And we made it for you as uh, an uplift and it's, he's pleading in all the way. So he loves frequency and, and how frequency can change the water of your body to make it be able to bring in and maintain the eminence of more light. The second gift is an ebook called Healing the Three Minds. And it's about the very specific tools and techniques that I have learned and developed and built upon over the past decade about how to heal trauma, how to heal your mind from all these programs, how to heal your heart and, and use your heart and what its real, real power is and how to heal and work with your gut. So it's a very a uh, nice complete set of tools and it's short, so it's 50 pages, but I make sure to give you these tools very succinctly so you can use them and they're very useful and profound. The third gift is that I'd like you to join me on my email list if you'd like, and if you do so, you'll get a free class about third eye development where I teach you that the third eye is the imagination and I help you to understand that you don't need to fix your third eye. Your third eye is fine. And what do you do with it? How do you make sure to strengthen that capability you have, which is psychic imagination? And then the last gift or the second to last gift is that you get to come join me every month for a special call at the end of each month. And I do it on the last Sunday of every month. And all those replays are always available on YouTube and I live stream it on YouTube. But if you join my list, you'll get an email with it too. The last gift and this is especially for your audience, is actually a meditation that I did called Galactic Forgiveness. And I walk through all of the different layers of subjugation that humans have experiences, and I help you forgive. Because that's one of the great acts of healing. And if we can forgive, we can do something special and really show through our heart and through the deep, deep healing of our species far beyond what your brain remembers, but what your DNA remembers about being human, how we can heal through forgiveness. So I walk you through, but I wrote music as the background to help punctuate it, to make it more powerful. And I have found that most people who listen to this find it incredibly mind blowing. It really does a big shift and you'll feel the expansiveness happen as all of these walls between you and everybody else end because you've forgiven them. So you're burning all the bridges, you, you feel free and it can be really beautiful. So I'm really glad to offer that to everyone as part of the free gifts. Wow, thank you, Elizabeth. That is such a powerful package and, and so many elements. Thank you for your generosity in that. And everybody make sure that will be linked on your speaker page. So make sure you grab that free gift. Um, that will go away when the when the summit is over. So get it now. And um, you also have a really powerful package, um, a, a $197 package that you're offering called Discernment and Discrimination Spiritual Training. Tell us about that. 
Well, it's a big, huge package, and, um, and I wanted to pack in as many classes for your audience as possible. And so the first one is called a class. It's a discernment and, sp and discrimination spiritual training. And I want people to understand what is light, what is dark, what are, are all these entities that might lead to your energy? How are we going to approach all this stuff around darkness and light or good and evil? How are we going to approach this with the mindset of, I want this to bring equanimity and light. I want my, my existence to end the war of power over. And so we, I get really clear and transparent about what that looks like and how you can really switch up your mindset and your activities in your life to begin to discern and not just make judgment, but to truly discern from a spiritual mindset of discrimination. Discrimination is a very nice mystical term for true discernment and the ability to make very, very good decisions moment by moment that is full of empowerment and uplift and elevation of light. And then the second class is actually what's called quantum and galactic anthropology. I cover both of those sciences. What is quantum anthropology and what is galactic anthropology? Why is it important? How can we use it? And then I talk about change. Back in college, I was in university for 10 years. I was well known to be a, a change theorist. I'm a futurist, but I'm also a theorist in that I created a model to understand how change works. This model was so useful that while I was in bachelor school, not even just master's, bachelor school, I was allowed to teach it at a university level. That's because it works. It works. It's, it's very simple, but it's deceivingly simple. And I want to teach you how to use it, how to use this mapping technique to understand how change from a human cultural perspective works. This map can also be used for interactions with any other beings. We could eventually, and we will, I hope, use it when we go to other planets, when we go to learn about other beings and where they come from, we can still use this map because it helps to organize reality and help you to understand how change is working in your life because it's always going to be there. But how do we understand it? And how can we make sure that the change that happens inside of us and in our families and in our societies is going to help us reach that timeline of peace? So I teach you not only about galactic and quantum anthropology, but this mapping technique that I'd hidden away in a box for 10 years because my teacher told me that it was dangerous. And she said, you're not going to be able to teach this publicly. And 10 years later, I got the realization, it's time. It's time to teach it. I don't care if it's dangerous. So we'll be dangerous together. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and then I wanted to make sure you got what's called the multi-dimensional multi mastery course. It's seven classes. And so each of these are between two to three hours long. And all my classes are. And so you get a lot of hours of teaching here. This is like, if I could set you up with how can I be the best human I can be with the mindset of a galactic being as well, this is what I would give you. So equations for enlightenment, how does enlightenment actually work? What are the patterns that show up when you look at people who are go on a path to enlightenment and when they attain it? There's very clear patterns there, and we talk about that. Soul skill sets. What are the soul skill sets that we come in with? And this, this is an ongoing list, but I've got a really nice, clear, really great list of what are the soul skill sets and what are their advanced versions. So, for example, I'm not just a psychic. I'm not just a seer. I'm the most advanced of that soul skill set. I'm an oracle meaning that I know how to 100% get out of the way to be a perfect mirror for somebody. That took a lot of eons of training, not just this lifetime. And so that's a good example. But I add a little bonus class in there about, well, how do I know which soul skill sets are mine? 
and I teach you how to discern that. Then there's the playground of time. Time, the way we are taught about it, especially when it comes to linear or timelines and those such things, that's very different than what time really is. <laughs> so I want to give you a whole other vantage point on time, and I'm going to give you a way to be able to stay in the moment all the time, where all your energy is, and not leak it into the future or the past. And even better, how to help your friends and family to stay present with you. That, that's probably the best part. And then there's full body discernment. How do you discern stuff? It's beyond the spiritual discrimination training. How do you discern little decisions and big ones? Can you use the same technique of discernment with the mind, heart, and gut with all the little stuff and the big stuff? Yes, you can. So I give you a full training on exactly how to use your body to make decisions and that that's what we would call discernment. And then healing polarities. There's so many polarities that exist in this particular dimension, but polarities don't exist in every dimension. They exist in about half of them. Why? And what are polarities there for anyway? Well, I'm going to teach you how they work and how to heal them, how to use them to actually help you to attain more light. You can use polarities, and then you won't hate them so much. <laughs> You'll learn how to use them. And then creating and maintaining spiritual power. Power is light. Light is power. How do you create it? How do you maintain it? How do you make sure you're not leaking it? I give you all the basics on exactly how to make sure to do that. And then spiritual etiquette and equanimity. Very important if you're going to be inter interviewing new beings or even dealing with humans. It's always going to be important to have good equanimity and good etiquette. And there are some nice, good quality universal rules that we can talk about. So I want to make sure people have that. Because honestly, I didn't have any of that for most of my life until I met a mystical teacher. And then she told me just how wrong I was to do some of the things I'd been doing. And I'm so glad that I learned those things. And I want to share that and pass it on. Then I'm going to make sure you all also get the fields of limitation and limitlessness. There's five main programs that continue to function in humanity that keep us trapped. One of them, the most commonly known, is the fear of death. That's a program. Not everything on this planet's afraid of death. My dog does not think about death all day long like I do. And humans do. I truly, once I realized that I was constantly, constantly thinking about it, always worrying about my children dying or my, or me dying or what the heck is this? This isn't existing everywhere. My ponies don't think about death all day. <laughs> and humans do, it runs their lives. And so do these other fields of limitation. They were programs that were put into our cultures and consciousness that kept us as good slaves. And you're not a slave. So it's time to be free. And those five limitations when they shift then you find this whole other realm of limitlessness such as actually celebrating the fact that destruction is one of the most wonderful gifts of the universe and proves to us every moment that we are loved that destruction is actually proof that the universe and source has love because nothing is ever wasted that kind of mindset shift can bring someone into a great, beautiful state of health. So I want to give you that chance. And that interactive ebook has an audio that goes along with it. So you can understand what are the five limitations and what are the opposites and how does it feel to be in those different mind states. So those are the things I wanted to offer because I had to think, if I wanted to train somebody to be a really good galactic citizen, what would I give them? And this is it. <laughs> wow. That's it. That is so much. Thank you for your generosity. It's like galactic human training <laughs> on every, from every angle. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. I mean, for $197, that sounds like thousands and thousands of dollars worth of course material. And I imagine that took you quite some time to create all of that. So thank you so We're much. Here. And thanks for, for offering it at such a, a, an accessible price.
it needs to be accessible right now. And because it's all, it's all instant access, then you're going to be able to use this all the time, anytime. And, and so that I think is really precious. It's a lot of hours. You might get sick of hearing me talk, but I pack it in. I really do. And I make sure you, you can really feel trained. It's, it's, it's a good um, entrance into becoming a citizen of the galaxy. And maybe one day it'll be like a whole book, but right now everybody gets the instant access audio so you can listen to it on your phone or in your car or wherever and, and be able to see which, which thing lights you up, which thing does your soul want to learn about right now. And, and don't deny yourself the chance to learn some of the basics again, if you already know a lot of the basics, sometimes hearing it from someone else and their experiences can give you new insights on the basics. So if some of those are familiar already, listen to them anyway, because there might be some tidbits and examples that'll give you new concepts to work with. Definitely. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. This has been really amazing and delightful and eye-opening and mind-opening and heart-opening. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed this conversation today. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yes. And uh, for everyone listening, be sure to join, uh, get in on the Facebook page and let us know. I'm sure that you must have um, comments, feelings, ideas about what we've discussed today. So uh, go ahead and get in the Facebook page and tell us um, what resonated for you. What did you learn? What did you agree with or not agree with? And what opened up for you? And then um, also uh, be sure I'll have the links attached to the page. So get the free gift, get the, the 197 offer if it's calling you. And Ultimately, the reason that I do this work is because I want everyone to know and feel that we are a community of connected light workers and that you don't have to be alone in your ascension journey. So thank you for joining us on this journey. I'm sending love to everyone and namaste. <laughs>